Hello everybody, my name is Andrew and welcome to Space Engineer Survival on Pertam. This is episode number 11 and today we're going to be doing some more base building probably. Ooh, fun. Um, but anyways, off camera I did a little bit of work on the rover that brought us through the battle in last episode. The intense battle that we- oh I still haven't built that- I don't know why I haven't built that. Okay, I, need, I still need to add that. But anyways, I did a little bit of work. I added a little bit of armor on the left side uh, and then I, I moved the turret to the middle so it's actually connected to the- con uh, the the uh what's it called the cargo container um instead of being right here so we can still walk around on top um but yeah that's that's pretty much all i did off camera is repair this thing so we wouldn't have to spend the first like five minutes of this episode with a with a uh, welder out repairing it but uh yeah i did add some modifications with these heavy armor blocks so pretty much the ship is now very strong on this side and much less strong on this side which means if we ever approach a battle uh with this thing we're going to want to make sure that this side is facing the uh the battle and this side is facing away from the battle pretty much so it has a it has a strong side uh, but anyways while i was doing this off camera uh something happened oh we have a bit of a problem um okay i'm just doing off camera work and this thing started coming at me hang on okay we need to get in our turrets right now it's about to get in our range. I think it's mere chance that it managed to fly right next to us, but it's about to attack us. Uh, gee. Oh, I'm not prepared for this. Turret. Gatling turret. Hop in. Now. Where is it? Here it is. Alright, let's light up. It's, it's dropping something on us. I don't know if we'll be able to destroy it. I think it's going to fly right over us, honestly. But we're going to light it up as best as we can, because... I think it's going too fast. I think we need to be shooting here. Okay, it's already out of range. Oh, that was a close call. <laughs> yeah, so if you didn't notice, that's actually an air traffic ship that attacked us. And uh, I don't think it meant to attack us. I think it just kind of had its path like going directly over us and just so happened to get close enough to where it was like, oh no, they're attacking me. And then it entered defensive mode with its bombs, its defensive bombs. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess that's something we have to worry about, air traffic going directly over us. And honestly, probably any installation we have, we're going to have to worry about that as well. Um, the air traffic just flying over it and thinking that we're hostile towards it. But um, but anyways, let's start this episode off easy. I'm going to build this refinery and these assemblers because they've been unbuilt for too long. And also some of these modules, actually. But uh, let's start with the, uh, the refinery. I don't know if we'll have enough steel plates for it because it's going to require a good thousand. Ah, eh, we should have enough. Um, okay, refine. Oh, you might notice, by the way, our power situation is better than, uh, than usual. It's, it's actually recharging extremely fast. This isn't even connected, so I think most of the power is coming from, uh, from those two, which are doing an exceptional job, apparently. Um, I guess they just charge really fast when nothing is being used. Like, none of the refineries are actually doing anything, uh, or anything like that. Alright, refinery, boom. Cannot withdraw. If we remember from last, or from, uh, a couple episodes ago, it takes three trips to do a full refinery with our inventory size. All right. Should, oh no, we, we can't withdraw, really? Wait, hang on. Uh, storage one. Of course we can withdraw. What are you talking about? Blasphemy. Blasphemy, there we go. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> it just didn't want us to withdraw it for some reason. But, uh, but here we go. Okay, so yeah, this episode, what we're gonna be doing, after we do these things is we're going to be building the uh, the rest of this probably trying to get at least most of these built and then we're also going to be working on the uh, the front wall over there so that's the back wall and that's the front wall uh, the front wall I've off camera I've just made like a skeleton of what like where it should be so we don't have to determine that um, and it actually directly mirrors that one over there so yeah pretty much just a wall right here I don't know what we're gonna do on this side but with two walls that should uh, that should, uh, God, I feel like the people in, have you guys seen, uh, Red Dawn, the original movie? Um, <laughs> that's what I feel like right now. Like when they're in the scene where the helicopters are attacking, because I just see that thing off in the distance. That might actually go right over us. So we just need to keep an eye on that. Uh, we might get some combat here in the early, <laughs> the early section. Okay, let's, uh, let's finish the assemblers now. Did we weld this thing up? Yeah. Let's finish those assemblers. Uh, Alright, here's assembler number one, and let's weld this up, and then we'll get assembler number two right here. I don't think that ship's going to fly directly over us. It's going to get pretty close, though. So once it gets well, within about maybe 1.8, we'll go to our battle stations. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, it's going to get kind of close. I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
Do how many how many more assemblers do we have? Is that all of them? I th yeah. Okay, we have one more up top. Uh, let's build that one up real quick. All components. That's exactly what I like to see. All right, Spirit of Lamont, do you dare to enter my airspace? You will face the wrath of uh, of my my little guns. Yeah, it's gonna enter our airspace on this side, so we'll try and get in that gun over there. Um, unfortunately, I don't actually have a seat available to get in my gun, so I have to actually get in them uh, via this thing right here. Turret. We want turret number five. Control. All right, let's see what we've got. Hello. Oh man, that's a scary looking ship. It looks like they've got four big thrusters, a bunch of guns on the sides right there. I don't even know if it's, it, it might be too high to get within our range. The other one was certainly low enough, but this one, I think, yeah, it's probably too high. If it comes within 800, that's when it starts shooting at us. But look how scary that thing is, man. That's got so many, I think those are guns on the sides right there. Then it's got those big guns on the front. It's got some guns on the back right there. Oh man. Yeah, we're lucky that thing has not decided to uh, to attack us here. Okay. All right, let's build some speed modules now. I want to get... Uh, we have one... Or we have two, rather, for each assembler. And you guys actually did comment as well that one assembler can actually have four modules. Uh, one on this side, one on that side, and then one on this side right here. Because that right there and that right there are two connectors. And then one on the bottom as well, just like it is on the top. So, I guess this could be more efficient with speed, but it's fine. Because speed modules... I don't know. It, it feels like you don't necessarily need four speed modules. You can just have more assemblers as well, and it'd accomplish the same thing, wouldn't it? All right, let's start our wall work by uh, by building up this secondary wall right here. Um, we're going to follow the exact same way we built the other wall, which means I believe it's... Well, how many is it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, no, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then a heavy. So we're going to do the same exact thing on this wall over here. So. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, skip one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Skip one. And that should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Skip one. Uh, and then right here is going to be just our heavy blocks for our wall. So it's going to be like a, a very a very similar wall to the other side. And it'll have like the same towers. By the way, uh, some of you did comment on the turrets versus bastions discussion. Apparently, uh, my towers are neither turrets nor bastions. They are simply gun towers <laughs> or uh, or weapon towers um apparently a bastion is wait no a okay so a turret apparently like juts out from a wall kind of like i think kind of like this like it would come up like that and then come up like that and that'd be like a turret and then a bastion is uh apparently at the same level as the normal wall so this is neither a turret nor a bastion All right, the main wall part is complete, and you might notice that it looks like a much shorter wall than the other side. I put it at the same height, but this one has that downward area that just makes it look taller. I think we keep it, though. I, honestly, I'm fine with it. We could raise... I, I don't know. I, I think I'm fine with it. Let's uh, let's weld in all these blocks that are not the heavy ones, and uh, and then we'll, we'll uh, add the profile, the front profile part, with the decoys. While we're welding this wall, of course, we see a uh, super gremlin flying above. I really wish I could see it looking directly at it. But that is so weird, because view distance by default, I think, is 15 kilometers, which doesn't make sense as to why I can't see it unless I turn like that. But anyways, let's keep building this. I'm going to be paranoid, is what I was saying, that those things are always flying above me. Some of you guys, by the way, in the comments said I'm totally not prepared for a reaver attack. So uh, I don't really know what to make of that. <laughs> Um, you guys don't think my three turrets are gonna save us? No? No, I think I think it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, so Reavers have a really low chance of spawning. Um, if we get a Reaver attack, it will just be kind of out of nowhere, I imagine. And it'll probably be a small one. Alright, that is the basic profile of the thing. Now let's build the, uh, let's build the, uh, tower. Now I'm gonna do something a little different for this one. I'm actually going to remove all of these and build the, uh, build the connection closer to the bottom. So in the last one, the, the conveyor is actually like toward the center of the wall. I'm going to build this one a little closer to the bottom of the wall. Just because I think it makes more sense for... What the heck did I just build? Hang on. Oh, sorters. That's what I... <laughs> I saw the wrong one. Okay, hang on. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to build it at this level right here, which is at the bottom for this side. It'll kind of be like off the ground over there, but it's fine. Uh, and then it'll just continue up like this. 
to that point. And I think that's where the turret is, right? No, the turret's two above. So the turret is actually closer to there. Uh, and then we'll do the same on this side. Actually, let me let me go out on this one. So this will change how we need to use the uh, the wall thing. Five, six. Conveyor. Two, three, four, five, six. Conveyor. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, there we go. I think that looks a little bit better. Actually, ooh, this is perfect. Uh, so this provides a, a way that we can just kind of continue this right here, this way. We can just go like that with the walkway and it'll be immediately like right up against the wall above this block. This is perfect. I think we might do it like that. Um, okay, so we just need to weld up all of these and then on top of this, of course, is going to be a turret. A turret, and I believe every time we add a turret, it increases our threat score for the uh, Reavers, making it more likely that we're going to be attacked by them. But uh, we keep adding turrets anyway, uh, in defiance of the rules. Okay, uh, let's yeah, let's weld these guys up, and then and then weld the turrets up, and then we'll uh, we'll finish the wall. It's gonna take a lot of uh, a lot. Of, wait, really? Am I already out of stuff? Bruh. It's gonna take a lot of steel plates. Which, uh, which is, by the way, why I was so interested uh, last episode in like an, an AI way to do things. Like an AI uh, miner or something like that. And some of you guys sent me scripts in the Discord uh, for the Pam auto miner. So maybe we'll try that out um, pretty soon. I have this idea in my head. And it seems like every episode I'm spitting out a new idea uh, <laughs> that we may or may not get around to. But I want to build like a giant mining base over there. Uh, and that's where I'd have the Pam auto miner thing do its thing. So we'd have like this giant quarry that it would be uh, that it would be mining in or something like that. Or maybe, ooh, okay, another idea. What if we had like this mining base but we had like this giant like stationary miner. So where the where the uh, where the uh, the ores are most dense over there, we could have this giant stationary miner mining that area and then we could have the Pam auto miner thing uh, flying to a different area that's not as dense that we would need a ship to get to. And then it would go back to that one main hub. And then from that hub, it would go on the train that would come back to the base. Oh man, okay, it's starting to take a little bit of shape here. How many of these can we get through? There we go. Um, let's let's get the rest of the materials for this. By the way, this episode is not just about building walls, in case you're worried. We're also going to be building the bunker up there. Hopefully we're going to get the bunker pretty much finished this episode. Uh, I want to get it, uh, get it filled in. I have a couple of ideas that I want with it. Uh, that we're hopefully going to be able to do and then hopefully by the end of this episode we will have a fallback bunker completely built that tree right there really looks like a person just watching me on the hill doesn't it creepy okay let's continue this thing our wall all right everybody and you know what we can do with this one check this out this is something unprecedented something we have never done before we can connect this one to the base uh i think i'm going to actually drill under here and, uh, and try to make this connection a little bit underground. Right, uh, right there. Uh, actually, do I want to? Oh, I can connect it right there, alternative. Mm, here's what I do. I remove that. I add this in its place. Then, I say add a one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Because music. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh... Let's weld. And there we go, we're now connected. So the base is now connected to those. But those aren't built. Oh shoot, we need to build those. Um, but yeah, those can now get uh, ammo whenever they want. Which is good. Uh, turrets. I would like to make one, two. Okay, I got three. But that should- Oh my god, you scared me, Velma. Good lord. We haven't used Velma in a while, have we? We'll use Velma. Next time we have a big uh, welding project or a big um, a big design project, we'll use Velma. Uh, the big the big design projects I see in the future of this base are the uh, the lighthouse, the the Dune power bank, which a lot of you, by the way, were on board with, which I love. Um, Dune power bank I think was a really good idea, and you guys gave me some some extra good ideas for that, um, like a detachable battery bank. Uh, cool stuff. Uh, and then also the the mining base. So three big ideas in the future that we could use Velma for. Super Gremlin coming toward us. Gotta be careful. 
All right, now let's build up the towers of these things, and then we will have a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a welding montage as we we uh, do the rest of it. So, oh, that's not the wrong block type, is it? We want the heavy. We want the good stuff. Okay, come all the way up like this, and then come around with these, and then come around with these. Actually, wait, no, you don't come around right there. Yeah, I believe it comes around right there because right here we have this sort of block going on. Um, yeah, giving us that nice, uh, the nice top edge that we love so much. And then right here, it comes back to one of those and then goes up like so. And then down. Like that. And then this. And then this, and then that. That's our commentary. Pro commentary, guys. I've, I've been at this for years. Uh, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Like this, like that, like this, like that. All right, and of course, like this. Sweet. Okay, that's that's looking like a pretty good wall. Let's let's come in right there as well, and then we'll do a little bit of welding. Uh, I won't put that one up because I need to weld that block. Um, okay, let's let's get this final final bit done, and then and then again off to the welds. Right there. I really like these towers. I think it looked pretty cool from the front. From the front especially, but like, just pretty cool. I don't know, it, it, it gives it a kind of a castly vibe. And a castly vibe is always nice. Look at that. <laughs> it just feels like, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how that looks. It feels like you're, well, it feels like an opening. It, maybe we can extend this across that. I don't know, that might not be a bad idea. Finding a way to, uh, to continue this wall. Um, maybe have another tower right here. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Actually, let's, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. Uh... We'd have to make it symmetrical, so this... Actually, you know what we really need? We really need to add this this thing. I don't know why, we, why we've taken so long to add this, but just that little wall right there, we really need. Ah, perfect. Okay, I like it. That looks pretty cool. I think that looks much better than just having it on one side, just continuing the wall this way. All right, and just one more up here. Or do I have one over there? No. Yeah. All good. This is really starting to come along. So, yeah. It connects right there. And then over here, up there, and over there, and then down there, and over there. I might, uh, I might build... Eventually, if this gets destroyed at any point, I might build a redundant system going underground. But, uh, for now, it'll be good. Um, alright. Let's weld in these light armor. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's weld in these light armor right here so that we can continue this tower. And then, uh, and then we'll do all this welding. <laughs> Maybe not all of it, but a lot of it, hopefully. I can't believe how defensible this base is becoming. I mean, like, take a look at episode, uh... Take a look at episode 8, for instance. And compare our base from episode 8 to our base now. And just see the changes that have, that have, uh, gone through in just that short amount of time. And it's all because we added the, uh, air traffic and reavers mod. All right, our wall is pretty much designed now. We've got the two tower, the three towers rather, uh, and then we've got everything we want. I mean, we still need to add the decoys on the front side, but I think it's looking pretty good. We just need to weld in some of these. So let's do a little bit of welding. Uh, I think we're gonna weld up this, like all these lines right here that are part of the main wall, and then we'll weld up like the uh, the main one of these. We might hold off on a couple of these uh, blocks though because we don't have that much iron. We're gonna have to go on a little bit of an iron expedition But let's get as much as we can welded Actually, you know what real quick? We're going to build a welding ship just a just a tiny one that can help us weld more than like one block at a time Okay, so for our welding ship, we're gonna have a medium cargo container like so We're only gonna use a medium one because I don't think we could carry anything larger So a medium cargo container like that. It's going to have Well, actually, you know what here? Two medium cargo containers, a connector on the back, like so, a welding thing on the front. Uh, is it called a weld? Yeah, okay, it's called a welder. Yeah, welding thing on the front, like so. It's going to have a cockpit. Let's use one of these buggy cockpits, because why not? <laughs> it, it would look cool. It'll have two batteries, one on the front and one on the back, because why not? And then it's going to have the thrusters. All right, so for thrusters, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six facing forward, because we might be uh, aiming down quite a bit. Uh, we're going to do 
a bunch facing down as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe. Five, six, seven, eight facing down. And then we're going to have uh, probably just, I don't know, like four facing the back like that. That might be overkill on thrusters. I really don't know. Uh, this thing right here probably has an overkill on thrusters as well. But I don't know. I think this will be fine. It'll be a very simple uh, ship as well. And then left and right might be where we have a little bit of trouble. We'll just do one left and one right and we'll see how that works. Finally, you can't forget the gyroscope. We'll do two gyros and that should be our welding ship. Maybe a little bit overkill on the thrusters, but I think I'm fine going with more rather than less. Um, the forward thrusters again because we might be facing down like that, so forward thrusters will help. Um, left and right might be a little bit lax, but I think it'll be fine. Alright, let's weld everything up. All right, it looks like we need to go on a little iron expedition. I'm gonna try something out. This is gonna be interesting. Um, I have a little bit of storage in the cockpit and in the uh, and in the drill on this thing. I'm gonna try to see how it works uh, <laughs> in this ship. It's gonna be so dumb, but uh, but we're gonna try it because I think we have an overkill of thrusters here. I want to see if they can actually stand uh, drilling. So let's get ready to do some mining. Let's see if this thing works. Oh man, this is gonna be so dumb. It, look, we don't even have that much power. It might not even work, but let's let's uh, let's at least give it a good old try. We're gonna go straight through right here. Oh man. Okay. Let's uh, let's start mining. I guess this will serve as our proof of concept for a mining ship as well. Uh, let's real quick take a check because we only have like we have ten thousand liters in the cockpit and we have. Uh, Oh, we have 33,000 liters in the drill. Oh my god. Okay, so this could actually be pretty good. Let's uh, let's keep mining. This is way faster than the hand drill. For some reason, I thought the hand drill was, like, fast. But this is, like, this puts it to shame. Good lord. Okay, what's our weight? We have 36, we have 45,000 kilograms. Let's, uh, we don't want to go overweight here. We have 10,000, so, wow, okay, this is going pretty quick, to be honest. Uh, I don't want to. I, I don't want to like go overkill though, because I think this thing will start to struggle, staying uh, uh staying flying. Currently, it's still fine, at fifty four thousand kilograms. But we just want to be a little careful. Make sure we don't overdo it. I don't want our first casualty to be this mini miner. All right, we are now at capacity with sixty eight thousand iron right there and twenty one thousand right there. We're still, I think, able to fly ish. Let's, uh, let's try and fly out of here. This actually tells me that mining ships are very viable on Pertam. I've been so afraid to do them because I've thought that the gravity of Pertam would make them very inefficient, but honestly, this is faster and easier than mining with a hand drill. Especially since we have a, a very small inventory on our hand drill and we have larger inventories on our ships. We only have about five minutes to get back to base, and we're totally going to have to manually move the, uh, the iron back and forth, but we should be good. Actually, I don't know why I'm going about backing you in. I can't even... I can't even connect. Actually, here's what we'll do. Connect. Alright, since I'm so lazy to bring all this stuff, let me... Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move this. We're gonna bring it up like this. Actually, you know what? Since I'm even lazier, let's just, let's just use these. Boom, boom, boom. We're, we're gonna bring it all the way back this way. And this should allow the iron to flow into this. We just gonna weld them up. And then the base should pull it automatically. Oh, we've run out of interior plates. Yoink. And the final ones. All right, we should now see that they're being pulled. Let's, uh, let's see. Yes, sir, they are. They are being pulled. Awesome. Unfortunately, we don't have those yield modules set up because we don't have any iron or any gold, but we now have a little bit of iron going in, and we now have a much faster way of getting uh, of getting stuff when we need it. Oh, I just figured out why everything's going so slowly. <laughs> I have all these things queued up on Le Peasant 3. This happens sometimes, uh, where it... For some reason, when you go into this thing, it goes into one of the uh, one of the peasants, 
we have to change this to the boss. Let me let me see if it. Okay, it still goes to the peasant. So what we have to do then is we have to change uh, the peasant and the boss. So the peasant three will now become the boss, and the boss will become the peasant three. Okay. Production, the boss one, technically. So now, if we were to set all this stuff to build, it should very quickly do its thing. Oh wait, no, it shouldn't, because what we need to do now is make sure the boss one is not in cooperative mode and the peasant three is indeed in cooperative mode. Finally, what we can do is bam, and it should go really quickly. Yeah, look at that. Check it out. Okay, and now also maybe make me some of them and then some of them and some of them. And then maybe do some of these. <laughs> You're wondering why I'm always out of iron. This is why. All right, anyways, our welding ship is built. Everything is built on it. And we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have eight thrusters pointing down, six thrusters pointing forward, four thrusters pointing backwards, and one left and one right. All right, let's boop, boopity boop. And uh, finally, what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, we have 24 minutes of flight. Let's uh, put a block tool on slot number one. Let's put our connector in slot number eight, switch lock. Let's put our batteries, real quick, battery. I need to hook those up. Uh, welder, batteries. And I'll probably rename those later, but, uh, but let's bring welder batteries down here to recharge on off. And is there anything else I wanna do? I don't think so. So let's, uh, let's connect this. I need to add more connectors to my system, okay. Ready to connect? Locked. Uh, let's put this on recharge mode temporarily while we're uh, while we're moving things. Alrighty, so we have welder cargo one and welder cargo two, and then we have storage one on the left side. So what we want to do is drag over a bunch of. Okay, apparently we can hold all of them. Fair enough. All right, that's pretty much exactly what we want. Okay, let's go. Yeah, this thing flies pretty well, honestly. Uh, left and right's not great. We might need to add some more left and right thrusters. But uh, let's let's try and weld some of this. Starting with these, I think. Oh man, yeah, left and right is really bad. All right, starting with this right here. Turn this on, and there we go. That's, wow, that's actually working really quickly. Not bad at all. I wonder how many we're gonna be able to get through. I mean, we have, we should have enough for quite a few of them, honestly. I'm not quite a fan of this battery positioning, the one that's right in front of me, because I can't see where the welder is. I kind of have to guess, but um, it's not horrible. Let's get this line right here. Oh, hang on. I can actually get both. I can actually get like all four of these at the same time. Wow, this is actually, this this makes life a whole lot easier. I said I wanted to get only the one lines, but it's honestly pretty easy just to go through the whole thing and weld it all up. Just like this. Let's see what this looks like in third person. Yeah, look at that. Oh, I think we ran out of materials. Yeah, we. that's actually pretty cool. We ran out of both almost at the same time. Um, all right, let's... Uh, I don't think we can weld anything else while we're here. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to weld. But we got a lot done over there. Like, we got a lot- that would have taken me like 30 minutes. <laughs> Not even lying. That would have taken me like 30 minutes to weld all these, because each one requires a trip back to the base. Because you can't hold that much. But alright, pretty good. Okay, while we're resetting, I'm gonna make a couple of changes. I'm gonna put the battery right there. I'm gonna remove this one, which is why it's on discharge mode. Uh, and I'm gonna put a couple of left and right thrusters on the front as well. I'm not truly... well, these are gonna fall off as well. I'm not really a fan of this battery because I can't see anything. I can't see where this is going. So we're just gonna move it on the back. It means that we can't get into tight spaces, but honestly, I don't think we need to since we're not building underground or anything like that. All right, we've made another 4,000... Well, we're still making some, but another 4,000 or so of those. We'll get a couple of these up and running. And uh, I think... let's uh, let's go on a little another weld run. Yo, I keep getting alarms going off. So first my phone alarm went off, was like, time to wake up. And then my watch alarm just went off and was like, time to wake up. It feels so good to wake up like earlier than you're supposed to. For me, that's like earlier than noon is, is uh, <laughs> like I never expect to wake up super early on a weekend like this. 
Okay, let's let's get these ones right there. I don't know, something about like I'm not a I'm not a morning person, but I, at the same time I kind of am. I really like waking up early. I just can't a lot of the time. That's the thing. It's uh I don't know. Something about something about work, uh, waking up early just increases my productivity. It increases everything. I don't know. The morning is just so nice. Um, whereas at nighttime, I'm super lazy. Like, I watch Netflix all night. Not all night, but yeah. It's it's a problem. I feel like Netflix addiction is probably a, like a, a real thing that people can suffer from. But anyways, uh, that's looking pretty good. We have the whole front right here built. We're missing that front right there, which is probably another 4,000 uh, steel plates and 1,000 um, uh, other things. But... Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's do one more trip with this thing, and then we'll move on to something else. Because I do want to get the uh, I do want to get the bunker built as well in this episode. So one more run with this, and then we start working on more bunker. Actually, it turns out we need cobalt ore as well in order to continue working on the wall. And unfortunately, I cannot see anything. So uh, we're actually going to work on the bunker then instead. Let me get close to the ground so I can see where we are. I can at least make my way to the bunker because I know kind of in the direction it is. Um, but unfortunately, the uh, it's it's very difficult to see the uh, where where the cobalt ore is because it all made lights for it. All right, bunker. So the bunker is going to be this door right here and this door right here. I might build like a fallout door of some kind. I don't know how, but uh, we might we might do we might try out a couple designs for that. But anyways, uh, door, door, and then this is going to be the rest of the bunker. So let's clear it out a little bit. Uh, and and see if we can see if we can start. So it's going to be kind of a small bunker. We don't really want that much. All I want in here is going to be a medical bay. I want uh, a refinery and assembler, and of course I want a uh, a little server room. Probably also a little armory that we can store a couple of weapons in. Oh, and a control room as well. So maybe just a couple of rooms. How long can you f ah? Oops. How long can you fly? Okay, you can you can just sit here for an hour. So I'm just going to leave that right there while we while we work. Because uh, we're probably going to be ending up using it as well. Okay, so from here, let's see. Did I bring steel? Bruh. Okay, one moment. Alright, so from here, it's going to come out like this. This is going to be the main hallway. And we're just going to have a couple of rooms. We're going to have the... Uh, let's put the med bay on this side. Let's put the control room on this side. And let's put the uh, assembler and refinery on that side over there. So first, let's start with the med bay room. It's going to be kind of over here. Uh, let's just build out a little area. Med bay room should also have a an oxygen tank and a... I don't necessarily... Actually, no, it shouldn't have a tank. We don't care about tanks. We just care about an O2 slash H2 generator. Because this is a survival uh, kind of thing after all. Okay, that's probably good. Let's hop out and see how well that is. Okay, so we'll have a door right there. And the room will continue this way. And I'm, I'm actually fine with it. Honestly, this is fine. Just like this. Put this in there. I'm fine with it uh, going up against the uh, the wall like this. I'm not going to like enclose it or anything, so I'm fine with this. Um, how many steel plates did I bring? 300? I can weld some of these. Okay. Let's, uh, let's weld these three. Or these four, rather. And let's build the, uh, the med bay there. Can I? No, I cannot. It needs to be built out in the open. Okay, that's fine. Can I build it right there? Or is the ship in the way? I can't build it there unless I do a little grinding of this right here. Weld, weld, weld. Weld, weld, weld. What do we have here? <laughs> that's dumb. Okay, so you come in here, boom, that's your med bay. That's where you spawn. If everything goes wrong with the base, that right there is where you will spawn. Uh, next, we want a little uh, little control room. Nothing too big, just a room that might have some monitors in it and a control seat so that we can control turrets and stuff like that. We'll build that on this side. Just a cheeky little control room. Okay, so here's our little control room. Uh, this one will have like walls on this side so we can put little monitors on. 
like right there. Maybe we'll put it right there as well just to make it look nice. Uh, and I don't want this room to be too big either, so it's probably going to be closed in. Alright, so this control seat's going to be like facing that way. So you come into the room, the control seat's going to be right there. It'll be facing a couple of monitors. That, actually, let's move back one. It'll be right there facing that way. You'll see the monitors. You can walk in front of it if you want. And there will be buttons as well back there that can, that will do things around the uh, around the base. So we'll have status monitors up here. This thing right here will be able to control turrets, which will be hopefully like out here somewhere. Maybe we'll put them on pistons so they can come up or come down. Okay. So we have control room, we have med bay room. Last but not least, we want the refinery and assembler room, which is going to be back there. And then we'll probably come in. I don't know if we'll come in with the welder. These are all like light blocks, so uh, it's probably fine. But we will have to do a lighting pass on it. Actually, you know what? Server room right here, because I, I do want a bunch of timers in this area as well. So a little, little cheeky server room. Alright, I kind of like it. So uh, the way it works is you come in, you've got these two doors, which will be there eventually. Uh, on your left, you've got your med bay room, which will have your med bay and your O2H2 generator, which will have ice in it. Uh, over here, you have your control room, which will have some screens as well as the, uh, the the seat that controls things. You have a little server room back here that you can that you can have timers in and stuff. And then back here, you'll have your assembler and refinery and storage room. So just a couple of storage places, as well as the refinery right there and the assembler, which will go next to it as well. Uh, let me build this up, actually. The so the refinery is going to go right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because that's about as, as, big it is, as big as it is. I don't know if we're going to have any modules on this thing. We might eventually put modules. It's, it's kind of a backup refinery, though, so it doesn't really matter if we, uh, if we have modules or not. But uh, refinery. Refinery. We've got to build ourselves a refinery. All right, put the refinery right there. It's quite large. Uh, and then put an assembler, which also will not have modules. We might put two assemblers, I don't know. But assembler will go like so, in connection with that. And then we'll either, we might put another one up there, or we might put another one right there, I don't know. This is, you'll notice this is the exact setup we had at the start of this, uh, of this series as well. Finally, we will have one of these, which, yeah. Just, just a little car container, like so. Or maybe right there to save space. Yeah, right there to save space. Why not? Um, and then we'll put a little bit of uh, a little bit of decoration around as well. Uh, these actually temporarily. Let me just weld these blocks in real quick. I don't want to have any unwelded blocks uh, under the thing. Just, just for looks reasons, for uh, aesthetics. So for batteries, I want to have two batteries. I don't think we're gonna have any power generation in this area unless we want to connect a cheeky power generation system out the back to like a, um, I don't know, like a, a windmill or something. But uh, honestly, I think it's fine just using those two batteries. They're just backup batteries and they won't be doing that much, to be honest. Um, we might put a connector in here and charge them though uh, from time to time with one of our ships. All right, let's do some welding now. Uh, I'm gonna bring the welding ship uh, for this because it should help us out a little bit. All right, so to get all the materials, I have this right here. I'm going to use Build Planner to do this. So for the assembler, let's yoink. Oops, that wasn't everything. What am I missing for this? I Build Planner is so weird sometimes. It doesn't get everything. I don't know why. Cannot withdraw nine metal grids. Wait, does this need metal grids? Really? Oh, well, shoot, because that requires cobalt. Eef. Does the refinery require metal grids? Okay, so everything requires metal grids, which means we're, we'll need a, a trip. But we can at least get almost everything that is required for these uh, for these things. So yoink, uh, put those in there. Oops, put those in, put those in there. Yoink, put those in there. And yoink, put those in there. Uh, but yeah, anything that requires steel, Ooh, can we get through here? Or metal grids rather, I cannot build because I don't have the uh, required materials. But I can build most of this stuff. So for instance, let's make sure we can actually get through here. We have to be kind of careful. Uh, I can build these. Stuff like this. And I brought a lot of steel plates as well. I think I might be able to... No, wait. Batteries require metal grids too. But at least I, I can definitely build this. Other than it's metal grids. Because I think... I think everything needs metal grids. <laughs> oh, hey. I can build a battery. I thought they had metal grids as well, but maybe not. Uh, let's go ahead and build these guys to the best of our ability. 
I think we can... No, wait. That also requires metal grids. Does anything not require metal grids other than batteries and uh, seats? Alright, I welded everything I can, but look how much requires metal grids! Metal grids, metal grids, metal grids, even metal grids. Power cells. But <laughs> it seems like everything requires metal grids. Luckily, though, I think daylight is coming pretty soon. Uh, yeah, you can almost kind of see where the sun is by looking at these planets, because they the sun can see them, so... We have an open tide. Uh, so the sun is, like, over there, so it should be coming up any second. Actually, yeah, you can even see it. So let's, let's get our miner out and get ready to go on a little cobalt expedition, because we are pretty much stalled without metal grids. So let's get those metal grids going. What? Nah, nah. I don't know what you grabbed, but nah. Alright, it occurs to me that this needs a uh, good old-fashioned one of these. Actually, two of these. Let's put one... Well, that... Actually, let's just keep one on one side. Alright, now this thing can see a little bit farther. Open tide, please don't attack me. Oh man, there's a, there's a nasty shadow in the way on this. But we are going to try and find the cobalt. Now, I know there's cobalt on this side somewhere. Gosh, that shadow is tripping me out a little bit. Did we actually bring enough? We might have gotten enough for uh, two of these. Yes, we did. Should eliminate a little bit of the shadow. Oh, God. Ship. Stop. 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 <laughs> Good Lord. I hopped out and it, was, it kept going and I was like, um, that's not right. Okay, I know there's cobalt somewhere around our base because I found it uh, at one point. All right, here's the blue stuff. Let's get a little bit of this. And this will allow us to do everything. <laughs> it's like the world stops when you don't have cobalt. I don't know how much we got on the first thing, but I think we only had like 30,000 of it. And if it lasted us this long, honestly, having a full uh, mini miner of it will be pretty good. All right, let's check it out. We have 20,000, 30,000, 13,000. Not a full ship, but it's not that bad. Let's just get this little bit and we'll, we'll head back. This should be enough cobalt to, to last us for a little bit. And this stuff is actually really close to our base, so this is good. Alrighty, beautiful cobalt. Are you doing it? Yes. And let's see how fast it's being refined. Uh, we have some stone. It's not being refined terribly fast. But uh, cobalt usually does take a long time to refine anyway. And honestly, these are probably refi refilling it with the... No, hang on. No, they're not. Is it just extremely slow, I guess? Let's check. Are we building up some cobalt here? No, it's being immediately used by the uh, the process to make um, wherever this stuff is. Yeah. Uh, have we been able to make any of those? Oh, we have 120. Okay, let me just yoink that. And we're going to go up here and manually put it in because uh, we didn't have that many things that needed steel, uh, that needed uh, metal grids. Like this needed some... That needed a lot, actually. This needed, like, four. This needed a couple. And this needed a couple. All right. There we go. We now have, I guess, technically a fully functioning base. It doesn't have any of the bells and whistles I wanted to add. So let's, uh, before we end the episode, because it's getting kind of long, let's add lights and uh, a power switch. So we can turn on and off the lights and turn off all this stuff when it's not being used. Hunchback dropship. Uh, can we see that from here? Yes. That's going fast! It's dropping, you could even say. Wait, is it... Is it falling? Is that about to crash? Let's check it out. Uh... Yoink! I think that's about to crash. Um... Hey guy, are you okay? And boom, there it is. I don't want to approach it because it's going to turn off my dampeners and it's going to attack me as well. But uh, if it actually dies, then that would be hilarious. I don't think it's going to. I think it's just doing some tactical crashes and it's it's going to be just fine. Pew. <laughs> Give it a little piece of my mind. 
It just wasn't ready for the Pertam uh, gravity. That's kind of funny. All right, let's let's head back and finish up our uh, our little little bunker. Okay, I've added some lighting to the bunker. It's got uh, a couple of different kinds of lights. It's got the main lights, which are like uh, yellowish, whitish. I think I need to make them a little more yellow. And then it's got the red lights as well. Uh, I'm going to set up a timing block to make it so that the, when the red lights are on, the uh, main lights are off. And when the main lights are on, the red lights are off. So let me real quick set up that timer block and I'll show you how it works. All right, everybody, say hello to the new lighting system. I've, I've uh, used admin to turn it to nighttime just to show you this. I'll turn it back to the normal time afterwards. Um, okay, so here is the, uh, yeah, so we have red lights. Red lights are on at all times, just so that you can uh, you can see if it's on low power mode. Low power mode means that once we have LCDs here, they'll be turned off. Uh, these things right here are turned, are toggled off. Uh, well, that can't be toggled off, but this, for instance, would be toggled off. Uh, and then this thing back here would also be toggled off. So all of the functional non-necessary components would be toggled off. Of course, this would stay on because it serves as a backup system. Um, but everything's off. But when you press this button right here, everything turns back on. So we, uh, th this right here turns off and all these main lights turn on. Suddenly you get a lot of nice light. Also, all the functional systems turn back on as well. So this you'll see is back on. Um, to do this real quick, uh, what we do is we have a button connected to a script and all that script does is uh, choose whether to turn this one or this one. It chooses whether to hit this one or this one based on the last state. So it's just very simple. It has two timer blocks and a state. And then if it's one state, then it does something. And if it's the other state, then it does another thing. Um, and for the, for the timers as well, if you've never used timers, pretty much you just set up actions to do. And then whenever you want to, uh, to trigger them, you can trigger them now or start a timer that will trigger them on a delay. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much how the setup is, is, uh, is set up. Um, I want to check something real quick. Let's check our, okay. So we have seven days of power on full usage. When we turn it off, we have 10 days of power. So it does increase things. And I imagine as we get more functional things, it will, uh, it'll be much more of a change. So for instance, if all this stuff over here is running, uh, then turning it on backup power mode will, uh, will change it quite a bit. And I imagine once we get this battery up, it's going to uh, be a more pronounced change as well. Uh, but anyways, that right there is our bunker. What we still need to do is add the doors on, which uh, we'll probably end up doing next episode because we're running out of time here. But other than that, everything in the, bu in the bunker is done. Other than one more script I want to add, which is going to be in emergency mode. So stay tuned for that, I guess. We might add that next episode as well. Um, other than that, let me admin mode ourselves back to daytime where it was. Uh, there we go. It was on 0.25. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think that's going to be this episode. It's getting kind of long. But uh, we now have two uh, different uh, different walls. And hopefully, maybe off camera, I'll, I'll weld these in since we now have the cobalt to do so. Uh, hopefully, we won't have to spend much more time welding these. But anyways, if you guys like that episode, please hit the like button. Put your comments and your suggestions for what we do in the future down in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Space Engineers.